Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. Yes, would you stand one more time, please? It is 11 minutes till 12 on the ninth day of April, 1987 A.D. And uh, we have to be gone by what time, Brother Enzi? Well, if I told you everything I knew, we'd leave by 12. <laughs> but he said, as long as I need. First of all, I want to express my appreciation for our district superintendent, Brother Holly, and also President Enzi. We appreciate him so very much. Uh, President Jackson, that has kind of a historical sound to it, doesn't it? President Jackson. Stonewall Jackson. Also, Brother Glass and the uh, kind words that he said. I looked around to see really who he is talking to or talking about, but I really do appreciate this fine man and everything that I've seen and heard here today. Amen. The uh, future of the college looks nothing but great. <clears throat> we believe that God has his hand on it now as he did at the very beginning. We was here for the beginning, as it has been stated, 1964. I taught a CAPS uh, series here just a few weeks ago. Had some students in there that were, wasn't even born when we opened the college in 19... That's good. I think that's very well. I was just a child myself then. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> 1966, I came to Houston, pastor of the church. This past week uh, was our 21st anniversary. Uh, of being a pastor of Mount Houston Pentecostal Church. This month is my 31st wedding anniversary, the 28th of this month. Brother Glass, the 1st of January, my coming birthday, I'll be 36. And uh, just got all kinds of great things to, to think. Been married all your life. Been married, yeah, sure I have. But it is just a, a privilege to be here. And uh, I have something from the Lord, from the Word of God, I want to share with you today. Amen. And I, uh, I want to say that I think that Brother Holly is the man for the office that he currently holds right now. And I want to say that Brother uh, Enzi is the man for the office that he is holding now. Amen. There's nobody else could take either one of these offices. I want to say that I am the very man to pastor the church that I pastor right now. Uh, nobody, all those guys that could preach there, but they could not pastor that church because that is where God wants me at. Just like God wants Brother Holly where he is, he wants Brother Enzi where he is. Are you where God wants you to be? Are you where God wants you to be? And I'm going to preach to you just for a little while, and I promise if you'll stay with me, I will not be very long. Uh, I understand some have to leave about 12. Is that right, Brother? Uh, in 12, 30. Well, that's, that's fine. Just slip out if you will. But I want to read, first of all, from the writings of 2 Timothy, the second chapter. And there will be some other scriptures I'll be using later on. But I want to use, first of all, this scripture here. Brother David Meyer is an alumni uh, he was a former student here, met his wife here. Now he serves on the board of directors. Also with Brother uh, Homer Green, also a former student, serves on the board of directors. So one of these days, men, you may be, one of you, the president of Texas Bible College, on the board of trustees, board of directors, district superintendent, general superintendent, our, uh, Brother Glass, what is your office? I'm trying to think pastor and uh, the other thing that he fills in for you may be part of that too <laughs> he's been picking on me all morning how many of you heard that so I've got a right to head back toward him but only the God knows the God of heaven knows where you and I will end up and it isn't important where we end up it is important that we fulfill where we are now with him Amen. second Lord. Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 through the 22nd verse Nevertheless, the foundations of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, 
And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You may be seated. Thank you so very much. Our our memory could reach back into many great things that have happened through the years, and our privilege to be associated with such a great institution here as the college, and uh, nothing but pleasant memories. Brother Jackson and I, as he has stated, we had a, had a uh, tremendous friendship that has developed through the, through the college. It brought us together in a closer relationship. And I thank God for that and his fine family and for uh, the blessings that God has brought unto us. My wife used a song entitled, uh, God Has Been Good to Me. I Can't Complain. I'm here to tell you I don't have any sad stories to tell you. God has been good to me. Amen. Amen. And uh, I want to preach to you this morning on the subject, a sealed foundation. I do not want to be negative, and I am as positive as I can be in what I'm going to say. And I, my first opening remarks will be very limited because you have been reading about it and knowing about it. But there was a program that, was, uh, that has been on the air, on the television airways for several years now by the name of PTL. It is entitled, Praise the Lord, or People That Love. And there's no use in me going and talking about Tammy or Jim and saying anything uh, concerning them that you do not already know. Every newspaper every day has something in there about it. And so it it does not uh, help the matter for me to say anything concerning them. I feel sorry for them. I've actually prayed for them. They need our prayers. I said they need our prayers. Amen. Also, this thing with uh, Mr. Roberts, Oral Roberts, and the $8 million and the tower that he was up there uh, praying for. And uh, someone said the other night, I never thought about it, said he didn't get it. I said, he didn't. said, he came down. He said, no, he didn't get it. He didn't get all of his money. I thought, well, why didn't he get all? He said, well, uh, they did not feel that he did, but he had to come down because either that or die. And, uh, you know, I'd come down too, wouldn't you? And I'd say I had it also if that was part of it. Also, I want to talk about a man by the name of Jimmy Swagger. Did you ever hear of him? Oh, think about it, Mama. You, you can, uh, you know, the man that plays and sings and has quite a bit to say. Right here in our own city, there was a man, a pastor, Austin Wilkerson, that pastored uh, uh, the church that goes back a long time, Raymond T. Ritchie Evangelistic Temple. This was a son-in-law that this uh, pastor, he had a very unfortunate incident in his life. The newspaper carried it on the front page, uh, you read about it, uh, the sin that he had fell into. Now, the reason I have mentioned these is because they're all uh, very hot items. The Newsweek magazine has the pictures on them. You read about Jim and Tammy and Oral and Jimmy Swaggart and here even on the local level. And the reason that I mention them is because every one of them have a Pentecostal flavor. They have a Pentecostal flavor. And every article you read, you'll read the word Pentecostal. You'll see charismatic, but inserted in there, there is the word Pentecostal. And the world doesn't know the difference. As far as they are concerned, Pentecost is Pentecost. And so whenever they think of Tammy and Jim or Oral Roberts or Jimmy Swaggart or even in this city, whenever they think of uh, uh, Austin Wilkerson or Evangelistic Temple, they think of the word Pentecost. They think of uh, some of them that have heard of Texas Bible College automatically places you in the same category as these people are. They think that we are all members of, of a club, praise the Lord club, or people that love club. Uh, they, they place us in a category of, of those that are known as Pentecostals. And I want to declare, and something that you already know very well, I want to say this, you and I are not Pentecostals like these people are Pentecostals. 
And I want to, to emphasize that, and you know it, but I want to emphasize it. When people say, what is the difference, or there isn't much difference between you and them, you believe in speaking in tongues. Let's just remind everybody, with all the love and patience that we can, that there is a vast world of difference between you and Jim Baker. Right. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. And there is a world of difference between you and Mr. Swagger. And uh, we're, we're trying to build a college. We're not trying. We're going to build a college, and we could use $8 million. But none of us knows a God that has threatened us or, or, or caused us to be uh, put aside and say, if I don't, God will. That's not the kind of God that you and I have living in our heart and life this morning. Right. Amen. Now, the psalmist David wrote in one of his writings, the 11th Psalm, he said that if the foundations be destroyed... What can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And I want to declare to you here today, students, alumni, the ministry, I want to tell you this. Underneath this, this beautiful thing that we call the church, underneath that that we have given our life for, underneath that that we have we have sacrificed and we have preached and we have prayed and we have given and we have invested. Underneath this old church, there is a foundation that is an everlasting foundation. Amen. It matters not what a club will do. It matters not what Jim will do. It matters not what Swaggered will do. It matters not what the word Pentecost will, will come to. I'm here to tell you, as far as the church is concerned, there is a foundation that is an everlasting, never dying foundation. Amen. Now, the psalmist David said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And I suppose for many centuries that has been unanswered until Paul had something here to talk about it. He talked about the foundation of God being a Sure are a sealed foundation. The foundation of God's church. It doesn't matter how crooked the so-called, quote, clergy becomes. It doesn't matter what happens in the headlines. It doesn't matter what Mr. Ted Koppel wants to dig out. It doesn't matter what the news media will use and print and put out. I'm here to tell you there is a Pentecostal experience and there is a true church and there is a foundation and you and I stand upon the foundation. Let's raise our hands and love the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And after every political empire has fallen, after every, every a theme of leadership and every power of man has fallen, the foundation of God's holy church is going to be sure and strong and sealed. Yes. Go ahead. Invest in it. It's going to be here a while. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in the writings of Matthew, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not. Everybody say shall not. Shall Everybody not. say shall not. Shall, shall not. not prevail against the church. Amen. Friend, the church is here to stay Amen. until he comes for it. Yes. The yes. Apostle Paul talked about the individual when he said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And he begins to name things of tribulation, tribulation, distress, persecution or peril or sword. He goes on and talks about powers. He talked about principalities. He talked about things you can see and things that you cannot see. My friend, it matters not what the newspaper says and it matters not what those even among us may do. You and I that are built upon the foundation, the church of God, you have a sealed foundation. And God is always going to have a, a pure and a clean church. Yes, sir. He's always going to have it. And I want to, I want to talk plain to you here just for a little while because uh, I, have been, I have been alarmed. I've gotten, as many of the pastors I'm sure in this city has, we've gotten telephone calls. People have 
have inquired, well, now, are, are you part of this? Uh, uh, do, do you know this one or do you know that? And, and uh, we that are using the radio as a, as a means of outreach, there are those that call our church afterwards and they have questions and they said, I can't understand this about this man or, or that man and, and I have sent money to them and so forth. Let me tell you something. It does, and, 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 and I try to be as, as kind as I can and, and I feel like that God has helped me in that, that field. But it doesn't matter if they all Fall. Right. You and I have the assurance yeah. that God knows them that belong to him. Yeah. And this is a sealed foundation. And we shall have victory and revival and power and glory with him. Glory. Amen. Oh, yes. This church is the foundation of God and his stand is sure. Yes. And his stand is sure. And Brother Holly, I feel like that this Bible college is part of God's church. Yes, and my friend, it is necessary to move, we're going to move. It's necessary to build, we're going to build. It's necessary to grow, we're going to grow. Why? Because we got a foundation, the right kind that holds us up. We can do it, we can do it because of that. In my text, it says, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Now, what seal makes the foundation sure? What is it that makes God's church, the foundation of God's church, stand it sure? What causes that? The rest of the verse explains what this seal is. And that is simply, the Lord knoweth them that are His. Amen. Glory. Glory. Now, I don't know. Maybe that means nothing to you. It's too near dinner time. But to me, that is an uplifting yes, and encouraging yes, thing for me oh, to yes. know that God knows oh. those that are really His. Yes. And this seals the foundation yes, of the church of God. Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. And everyone that nameth the name of Christ, the Bible says, depart from iniquity. Yes. And so, Mr. Baker and Tammy and all of you, God help you. I love you and I pray for you. But I'm here to tell you, God never did know you. But he does know those that are his. Right. And they depart from iniquity and live for God. Glory. Amen. 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 We believe that the foundation of God... Stand it sure, having this seal. And that seal is that the Lord knoweth them that are his. Yes. The Lord knoweth them. He has a knowledge that you and I could never fully understand. You see, folks that become discouraged and disappointed and confused and frustrated, uh, <clears throat> they, and some of them are even deceived because they expect too much from flesh. I'm talking about they put their confidence in a personality. One man told me, he said, the reason your radio broadcast, we've been on a year now. He said, the reason your radio broadcast will not go is because you're talking about a church. You need a personality. You don't need to have your son preaching all the time. You need to preach. They need to hear about you. It needs to be the Franklin Jones program. You got to have a personality up there. Well, I got to thinking about that and all of these. I guess they are successful. It seems like they are. You hear the Jimmy Swaggart show. You hear and, and, and you read and you hear on the radio and you see on the radio. All of the involved. Every one of them is a, built around a personality. Yeah. Built around a man. Yeah. Amen. Right. I said built around a man. Yeah. And every time we build anything around a man, we're subject to the failures and the weakness of men. But this church, the foundation of God, standeth sure. And sometimes it, it, it becomes discouraging because we find out that all people that come to church are not honest. All people that come to church are not true. All people that sit on our pews are not real. All people that name the name of Pentecost, they're not Pentecost. Oh, they may know the songs. And they may quote names and they may go back a long ways as far as their, their buildup or their, their history is concerned. But they don't live up to what the Bible is talking about. And the Bible tells us plainly that the Lord knows them that are His and seals them upon the sure foundation that's going to stand. 
I want to show you here, it says in the 20th verse, that in a great house you will always have vessels of gold, and you'll always have vessels of silver and wood, and also of earth. Which lets me know that not everyone that claps their hands, not everyone that sings our songs, not everyone that dresses similar to our dress, not everyone that claims they are, are a vessel of the Spirit of God. Paul said some of them are honor and some of them are of dishonor. Oh, yes, there's always going to be a Judas among the twelve. I said there's always going to be some that's going to turn away. And it's, it's, if it was true in the day that when Jesus walked up on the earth, it's true today. But my friend, get your mind off of them and get your heart centered upon God. God has vessels of gold. God has vessels of silver. God has vessels of honor in his house. Hallelujah. 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 But you say, well, Brother Jones, what about those that, that, that are of wood and those that are of stone? What are them? Well, it says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor. Yes. Just find you an altar and pray through. That's it. Yeah. But it didn't say break them or burn them. It said pray them through. Yeah. Bring them in. Everybody that that's, sings, oh, how I love Jesus, they don't really love Jesus. But some do. And those that do are the ones that God knows. And those that do must help those that pretend and play. And those that do not understand and do not know. A well-known evangelist many years ago on the field, he was going to leave the field. He talked to his father. His father was a pastor, and he said, Dad, I feel like I'm going to settle down soon and feel like I'd like to pastor. And you know what I'd like to do, Dad? said, the last 11 years I evangelized. I've been to a lot of districts, a lot of churches. He said, I wish that I could go back over 11 years to all those churches. I wish that I could reach in and pick out a certain family, the cream of the crop, the good ones here, one of those over here. And I wish I could bring them all together, and then that would be the church I'd pastor. That wise old dad pastor looked at him and said, son, that's impossible. He said, why? He said, because that's what God's going to do one day. Yeah. Yeah. I said, that's what God's going to do one day. Oh, yes. He's going to reach down. He's going to take those that have, and those that have not are going to be sitting there wondering but those that have, he's going to take. But listen, let me tell you, and I'm as positive as I can be. You and I, we must not become discouraged because of what has happened among us or even with us. Because the foundation of God is sealed and sure. That's right. Glory. God is not confused. He knows them that are his and that have his name and that have departed from iniquity. He Knows every one of them. Now I'm going to say something now that could be misunderstood. If anybody, if this is being taped, anybody just take this part of the tape, they would say, well, I, uh, I never knew that about him or that's exactly what I thought about him. But I want to, to turn to the writings of Revelation, the 13th chapter. And in so doing, I want to read verse number 11 of chapter 13 of Revelation. For it tells us something that will help us in the confused state of that that has the flavor of Pentecost. Now, <clears throat> I'm sorry to say, Brother Enzi, some of the slides of some of those students, and I've been around since we started this, some of those are not living for God today. Some that sat in your class, some that sat under your leadership are not... And I am not magnifying that. But man, I've got to be honest about it. I am not saying there's good in that. But I at least got to, to admit that it has happened. And I pray to God that there's not anyone here that should the Lord tarry. We look back upon pictures and slides and say, remember them? 1987 class? They're no longer in the ministry. They're no longer living for God. You don't have to be that way, my friend. You have a foundation that is solid and sure and sealed if you'll just wake up and get a hold of it. Oh, yes. That's right. Praise God. I'm sick of young people committing suicide that are associated with our church. 
I'm talking about physical and spiritual suicide. It's happening among us. And this is not negative preaching, man. You walk up there to that casket and look at it and say, this is negative. I'm not going to accept this. But you'll follow it all the way out to the cemetery and say, there it goes down. But I'm not going to accept this. But it's happening just the same. This is what it reads in Revelation 13 and 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Whose deadly wound was healed. Now hear me now. And he doth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven. On the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of, these, of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth and they that should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak. And caused that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great and rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Let me say this, and I want to qualify it. I believe in miracles. Brother Glass, I believe every word of the healing in your body. There's not an ounce of doubt in my mind. We had a, a, a man in our church Sunday before last. His little girl had uh, rheumatic fever in the hospital. He came up for prayer for his little daughter. We anointed him. We anointed him with oil to go to the hospital to hold his baby and pull it to him and pray for her. And the man did exactly as he was instructed. Monday morning, the doctor said, we cannot understand it. There's no fever. There's no sign of it. There's no history of it. Take your daughter home. I believe in miracles. And I want to, I I, if I had time, I could tell you how that God has, has raised up through, through the preaching and through the, the faith of, of our little church over here. God has raised up miracle after miracle after 21 years of being there. So I believe in miracles. I believe that God still does miracles today. But I want you to hear me now. If you are a child of God you should not live for miracles. Amen. That is right. Amen. Yes. That's right. Amen. Amen. Right. You should not follow miracles. If you're a child of God, you should not seek after miracles. Amen. Amen. I know I'm crossing some, but you, you hear me out. Amen. Yes, sir. Hey. The PTL, the 700, that's all they do is sit there and talk about miracle here and miracle there and signs here and wonders here and glory of God here and guideposts here and, and positive thinking here and the power of all. That's all you hear is miracles. But you don't hear one ounce of truth. Now listen to what this says. Some people will follow every promoted Miracle campaign that comes along. Some of our people, I've actually had them, Brother Jones, Brother so-and-so is going to be in Dallas this weekend. Can I please be excused? Well, who is this? That's the man you know that has the power to dive off the hundred-foot tower into a teacup of water. Or, you know, from the cross to the... You know, whatever. And I said, what can he do? Oh, listen, God has used him. Let me tell you something, and these instructors will tell you this. Everything you need from God is found in your local church. In the local church. Local church, local church, local church. Oh, yes. Amen. They go after this. Brother, brother, brother Glass, 
it's, it's almost like you have to have a past in order to have a, a future. Uh, yes. I'm talking about a, 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 a disrupted, a, a, a stinking rotten past. You know, yeah. we finally learned our lesson on some of that. Yes. You know, from the cross to the fingernail clipper or whatever it is, or uh, from, from the rodeo to the pulpit. You know, come man, come here. He used to ride bulls. Well, yeah. big deal. Big deal. Yeah. He used to ride a bull. Well, that's good. But what I'm saying is this. If we're going to follow after all. Amen. I had a preacher tell me that he had a woman in his church. This, this, this preacher is no longer part of our organization. I'm sorry to say. But, and I won't even name the city. But he said, listen, man, I had over 2,000 visitors. Said this woman is something. I said, what does she do for you to have that many visitors? 2,000 visitors. He said she has a, a healing, a miracle healing ministry like you'd never believe. I said, what's her name? He told me. I said, I never heard of her. I said, what is her specialty? He said, when she prays for them, blood comes from her right hand. Now, Brother Jackson, I don't mean this ugly, but that's kind of messy. Yeah. <laughs> she needs to have that thing checked. Yeah, right. Say, Brother Jones, you shouldn't make light of it. Let's get in this right here and see if we ought to have blood coming out of our hand. There's only one that shed his blood. There's only one that has the hand with a wound in it. Hallelujah. The foundation of the church is solid. Hallelujah. But we don't need we don't need to follow signs and miracles. Really now? You say, Brother Jones, you're taking away from the apostolic ministry. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not taking away. I can't add to it or take it away. Amen. I'm just saying that's not what God wants his church to do. Amen. You get in the word of God. Listen, students, you get in the word of God. You get in the prayer room. You make the dedication. God will supply the miracles as they're needed. I believe that. I've been asked before, can anyone receive their healing when they go to these campaigns and where the truth is not preached, can they be healed? Well, this is strictly Jones' theology, but I believe people get their healing there. I believe they do. I believe that God honors the faith that they have when they walk in there. Their faith is reaching for God, and I think there's some people that leave there and they receive their healing because of this. God heals on the basis of faith. That's right. Amen. But now get this. Amen. God saves on the basic of truth. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. I would rather be saved than healed. Amen. So if I want to follow a miracle, and that's what all of this, that's the reason it's in headlines. That's the reason we're talking about a $3 million project. They're talking about $170 million a year. Yeah. They're talking about uh, Heritage USA. We're talking about TBC, Texas District. They're talking about millions of dollars. We're talking about, sir, could you give? We're talking about alumni, could you sacrifice? We're talking about, about churches, could you? And, and our projects to them is pocket change. But everything they have is based upon a good God. You know, everything is good. A good God, a good singer, good cancer, good sin. Everything, I'm okay. You're, everything is all right. Not so in the mind of God. God said he knows them that are his. And they depart from iniquity. Get away from it. My Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you what? Everybody say it. Oh, no, you should have a miracle, and that makes you something. Not so in the eyes of God. Truth is the only thing that can set you free. We are not miracle seekers. We're seekers of truth. We desire to have the truth of God. I believe in miracles. I've asked God, God, please, Lord, let me me have more. Let me see more. Let me... Let me be part of, of the end time revival. And it includes miracles. But I want you to know. Somebody said, well, I know what God does. God uses miracles to get people there. For what? For offerings? If God ever used a miracle to get people to come, he used a miracle to get them to come to hear the preacher preach the truth. Amen. 
And that's the only reason. It's not for personality. It's not for big churches. It's not for big names. It's for the preaching of the truth. The truth, 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 the truth. Then he said, the beast does great works, makes fire fall from heaven. And notice this. Now, the fire that fell from heaven, the Bible says, it's in the sight of men. It's always in the sight always. of men. Yes. It's always in the sight of men. Yes. Now, please, I am not anti-miracle. No. We had a little boy in our church named Bobby Collier. He was also a member of our school. Bobby was seven years old. One Saturday, one of the meanest little old, sweetest, meanest little, ugliest little old boy you ever seen. He was all combined in there. Bobby Collier. Oh, bless his heart. Bobby, one Saturday, one Saturday morning, rather, was riding his bicycle, turned right in front of a van. A van ran over him. I got the call from the mother, and she said, Brother Jones, we have Bobby at the hospital in Humble Northeast Hospital. Can, can you come? I said, yes. She told me. I went, but before I left, I called the church, and I said, start the call around on our prayer band. Bobby's been hit by a truck. I walked into the hospital. I saw the helicopter come down as I drove up. I walked in the hospital in Humble. They said, they're life-flighting him to Herman Hospital. He's unconscious. And so I took the mother and daddy and pulled them to me and prayed for them. Got in my car. When I got to Herman Hospital, told them who I was, they took me in a ward, and there laid Bobby laying down in a gown. I walked, he was real still. First time he's ever been still since I've known the boy. I walked over to him and looked at him. I thought he was dead. And I looked down at him, and I saw his little old leg kick. And he looked up at me and he said, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, Bobby, Bobby, what is it? He said, I don't know. He said, I got run over by a truck and I woke up here. Between the hospital in Humble and Herman Hospital, God worked a miracle in his life. Yes. The mother said, one side of his head is so deformed. There was nothing wrong with Bobby's head when I walked him there. The doctor said he's bleeding inside. I raised his little gown up and looked at those skinny ribs. Wasn't nothing wrong with him at all. He had, a, he had a gown on that had a picture of a bear. And I said, whose picture is that? He said, yours. I said, Bobby, you're all right, son. This was on Saturday. It was on Saturday. Tuesday, Bobby was back in school. Friday, I gave him a whipping. I believe in miracles. Yeah. I believe in miracles. Yeah. But I don't follow them. Yeah. I want truth and the word of God above all. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, whenever it comes to mystery, magic, and miracles, boy, you can pack the building. Come and see mysteries and miracles. And magic. But you write down there and say, I'm going to preach on how to be born again. And Well, you mean that stuff again? Haven't you got anything different or holiness? Can't you get off the clothesline? Oh, God, some way help us. Come on, some of you preacher boys, say amen. amen. What I want, I want, a t I want a Tom Barnes ministry. He'll be the first to tell you, don't pray for miracles. Right. He'll be the first to tell you that. You pray for truth that God will lead you in that truth. Yes. Amen. All right. He said that they, he caused all to be deceived, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and bond. He called them all to receive the mark in their right hand, on their forehead. He's going to put his seal on them. But God has his seal on his church, his foundation. There's a seal that's there. And then he said, here's the signs they'll have. They'll have a mark and a name and a number. Can't buy or sell with any of that. That's part of it. Let me tell you, and, and, and I'm probably bringing in too much of, about the PTL and all that business, but I tell you what, folks, I don't want them to put us in one lump. No, no, I don't want them to put us all right there. No, no. I've read every article I could find, not for the gossip. I just wanted to see if they ever said UPC in there. Because I didn't want us to, I wanted to write that editor and say, sorry, sir, you made a mistake. Right. We ain't part of that. We're not charismatic, and we're not assemblies of God, Amen. and we're not part of that movement. Amen. We have nothing to do with that. We are a million miles apart. Amen. 
Yes, sir. We're a million miles apart. Then he said these words in the 14th chapter of Revelation. I'm going to bring it to a close, Brother Enzi. He said these words in the ninth verse. He said, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive the seal or mark in his right hand or forehead, that's the only way you're going to make it. That is the only way that you can make it. For that lets everyone know and the beast know and, and, and the things that are involved with that period of time to know that you have either you have either denied or accepted what they're telling you and that's part of it there you and i as possessors of truth and seekers of truth we must of necessity remember this this church i don't care really i not only and i'm from a long life my daddy was a preacher my, uh, he had two sons that are preachers. I have two sons that are preachers. I have two brother-in-laws that are preachers. I have a son-in-law that is a preacher. I have, I have nephews that are, I'm a long line for the ministry. But I want to tell you, if all of them go a different direction, and I pray they won't, I must never leave the truth never. of God's word. Amen. Texas Bible College is giving you just that. You better not ever reach for anything else. You have not been neglected. You have been given the whole counsel of God. It was here in 1964. The men that taught it then are, have given it to some of the men that are teaching it now. It has been handed down and handed. We are not a club. We're a church. Amen. We don't have personalities. We have a Savior. And he is still saving and keeping those. Let's stand to our feet and love the Lord together. Let's praise his name together. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise Blessed God. be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right where the, the uh, cafeteria is now, we only had one classroom in 64, and all the teachers came to us. The students just came in and sat down. I sat in the back of the class. It was before we was blessed with this great cowbell here. And uh, a young man showed me how, and we rigged up some dry cell batteries, had a little bell on the wall, and... I would look at my clock, and it was time. I'd touch two wires together, and that would ring. I remember Brother J.T. Pugh driving from Port Arthur, and uh, he was 40 years of age at that time because he said, I feel like I have 15 good more years to give to the Lord. I remember he would come into the class, and as he'd walk into the class, he'd start singing. And I want you to know Brother J.T. Pugh is a tremendous preacher, but he ain't much for singing. But he would walk into class, stalwart, just, in those days we didn't have hairspray, he had hair oil. He'd grease it down, his hair looked real dark, and he'd say, the reason I'm in this church, I want to be saved. The reason I'm in this church, I want to be saved. The reason I'm in this church, I want to be saved. I want to be saved when Jesus comes. Oh, the reason I'm in this church. Oh, I want to be saved. The reason I'm in this church. And I want to be saved. The reason I'm in this church. Oh, I'm going to be saved. Well, I. And we'd sing it again. Oh, the reason. 